guys, welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'll be showing you the top seven most common web design mistakes, and then I'll teach you how to avoid them. But before I get started, I do want to mention that we are on the road to our first 10,000 subscribers. So if you've been watching my videos or you're new around here, please consider subscribing if you like this video for more Wix content. But let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a really tiny basic website that I created but I do see a lot of websites similar to this. The first thing I want to cover is that this website is using way too many fonts. The logo is the font Poppins. The menu, the header, and these buttons are all Proxima Nova. This paragraph is Questrial, and this form down here is Futura. Now best practices is to make sure that all of the fonts on the website are consistent. I typically like to keep it between one and two fonts. And since the logo is Poppins, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything else on this site is Poppins as well. And even though you're using one font, doesn't mean that you can't use other variations. So just because the logo is Poppins heavy, doesn't mean you can't use other variations. So for this menu, we switched it to Poppins light. For this header, this might be good for Poppins bold, or you can do medium. For this paragraph, I'm gonna choose Poppins Light. For these buttons, I'm gonna choose Poppins Light as well. For this form title, we're gonna use Poppins Medium. And for these inputs, we're gonna use Poppins Light. We're also gonna go ahead and remove the italics from it. For the button, we're also gonna choose Poppins Light. And we're also going to remove the italics from that as well. And then for the success message, of course, we're gonna use Poppins Light. So as you can see now, all the fonts on the website is Poppins. Now, if you do want to use two fonts, I really suggest you only use it sparingly. If you want to use a secondary font, maybe a, you know, an artsy font, I suggest using that for maybe titles, something like that. But for this example, we're just gonna use it as Poppins. The next thing I want to cover is consistency. So there are several things on this website that we need to change to make consistent. For example, if we look at this menu, four out of the five pages are all caps, but the blog has lowercase characters. So what we need to do is just come over to pages, come over to blog, rename, and we'll make sure everything is capitalized, just like that. The next thing we'll notice is that there are like four different colors on this website. We have blue up here, blue right here, we have red right here, there's green, and then all the other elements on the page is black. And even this social bar is gray. So we actually need to switch this up. And for this website, I think we're gonna go for something like a red. We're gonna come up to the menu and we're gonna make sure that all of the items are set to some sort of reddish orange. And we'll do that for all the buttons as well. And for this form, of course, we're going to also make this, we're gonna make the input fields that orange as well. We're gonna make that button orange as well. And then if we look at these buttons up here, you're gonna see that these this text is white, but this one is dark. So we also need to change the button text color to white. And then for this thank you message, we're just gonna make this black. So as you can see, we're already starting to see some improvements with the website because everything is starting to flow together nicely, but we're not quite there yet. The next mistake I want to cover is using default designs of elements. For example, this menu is something that I see quite often in a lot of new web designer websites, but it's not really that nice looking. So what we want to do is maybe choose a different option. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. I'm gonna come down to add menu and we're just gonna drag out this one right here. Then we're gonna make sure that the design has our, our font and the color is correct and consistent with the rest of the site. And it looks like it is, and it looks like it is. I feel like this menu is a lot more classy. I also don't want to use this, this social bar. Personally, I think the circular ones are kind of old school or lame. So I typically like to use this one right here. And to be honest, the default size for these are quite large. So I'm gonna go into layouts and I'm gonna make these maybe like 24 pixels, just like that. Now we'll find a place for it in just a minute. But then if we look at these buttons, these are also basically the default styling for buttons. The only thing that's different is maybe the color and text. If we come over here and add a radius of eight, this is what the buttons are gonna look like. So not only does these rounded borders match the styling of these subscription forms, but it no longer looks like the default styling of that button. 
So we'll go ahead and do that for this one as well. And then actually, if we look at this, this one, these had eight radius. So if we come over to the subscription form, go into the design, then on around the corners, we're gonna make sure that these are set to eight as well to match everything else. And we'll do the same thing for this button right here. The next mistake I wanna share with you guys is this image. Even though using images on your website is best practice, I would say rotating them and adding these filter things or these border things is not really the best practice. So what we would probably want to do is just leave it like that. Also, if you watch my videos a lot, then you would know putting stuff outside this line like this makes it pretty hard for anybody to see if they're on a smaller screen. So if we shrink this down, we're gonna notice that image is kind of disappearing. So what we actually wanna do is find a way to make sure it's in between the lines properly. And that actually brings me to my next mistake. Nowhere on this website are we using any sort of strip. Now I know we talk about strips a lot on this channel, but if you are new and you don't really know what strips are, they're basically blocks that we can put content inside of. And the reason strips are so nice is because it helps space out your content and makes the website look really clean. If you are new to the channel, I do have a tutorial on strips if you would like to learn more. The link to that will be in the description and a little card should be popping up in the top right corner. So feel free to pause the video, go watch that and come back to this one. But if we take this section right here, we have a heading, paragraph, two buttons and an image. And if we wanted to implement that into this hero section right here, we could split this into two parts. We can put the image over here on the right hand side and then we can put the content over here on the left side, including these two buttons. And then honestly, we really don't need this line anymore. And then of course, we can also put another strip down below and put the form inside just like that. So now the website is already starting to look a lot better. The next most common mistake that I see is these headers. When you have headers that are centered and you just add content vertically, it's just gonna take up so much real estate on your website. But if we make it to where like the logo's over here, menu's in the middle, and then there's something over here, then all of a sudden you can bring it up and it doesn't take as much real estate. However, to accomplish this, we actually need to use the strips. Let's go ahead and add a strip. We'll make it the same size as the header. Let's make sure the background color is the same as the header as well. And then we're gonna come over to layouts. We're gonna add a column. We're gonna to come to manage columns and add another column. And then here, what we want to do is press layouts and come down to customize proportions. And here we can drag out exactly what we need. So what I'm gonna do is leave 20% on the left and right and have the middle be 60%. So now in the 60%, we are going to add this menu, which we can shrink it down a little bit to make sure it fits inside. Then for this logo, we can shrink it down quite a bit because logos don't need to be that big at all. And then for the social icon, we'll bring it over here. And now we can just select the strip and bring it into the header. And this is the brand new website for desktop. But the last mistake that I see most common on websites is web designers or business people trying to make websites for their business always forget to check mobile. If we switch over to the mobile editor, if you forget to fix this, this is what the users are gonna see on your website. And if you didn't know this, about half of the people that come to your website will be on mobile. So it is very important that you make sure that your website on mobile looks just as good as desktop. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the logo to the left. I'm gonna pull the menu over here to the right. I'm gonna use this social icon and I'm gonna right click, press move to, and I'm gonna select menu box. And then of course I'm gonna press layout and I'm gonna make sure the icon size is maybe like 20 pixels. And for spacing, we maybe wanna do like eight. And then I'm gonna come over to the toolbar and just center it up. And then if we look at this mobile menu and press design, we're gonna see that the font is Proxima Nova, which we don't want. We want Poppins Light. Also, if we look at the selected page, it's not the color that we want it to be. So let's just go ahead and change that. And now we are done with the mobile menu. I'm gonna go ahead and hide these elements, these other strips, because we no longer need them. And this is going to be our header. Now, typically for pages, I like the image to be the first thing people see. So what I'm gonna do is press Manage Column and I'm going to switch these column orders so that way the image is up here at the top and the text is at the bottom. Now it's time to make sure that the design looks nice. So for headings or titles, I typically like to keep it 
around 24 pixels for the Poppins font. Now different fonts can look different. Now keep in mind that just because you are viewing the mobile editor on a desktop computer or a laptop and things may look fine in the editor, it's still smart to publish your website and pull it up on your mobile device to check it because sometimes actually viewing it on a mobile device, things will look a lot different. And it is just a little bit of trial and error until you really start to understand what the mobile will look like. So for me, 24 pixels for titles and then 13 pixels for paragraph text is typically what I use. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of these as well. And also, if you noticed, the buttons kind of disappeared. If we want those to show back up, we can always go to hidden elements and come down to buttons just like that. And we'll show them. And they're part of this column, so we need to bring this down so that they show. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that there are 13 pixels for the font size. I typically make buttons about 100 pixels wide and 35 pixels high for mobile. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for these two buttons as well. All right, and that is basically it. Now we've taken a really, a really bad website and made it into more of a presentable website. Now there really isn't that much content that I put on it, so it's not gonna really seem that complex, but take these concepts and use them on your own websites. But that basically wraps it up for the video today. If you guys did learn something, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you already are subscribed, please just go ahead and like the video because that also helps the channel grow. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you all in the next one.